what I don't do very well with is not having something running in my head at any given moment. And as it progressed, God started showing me some things about my own life that I'm just going to be vulnerable and talk about and see if anyone else lands there. Fair enough? We are a very busy generation. There's always something we can tie into. Whether it's this, a book, no offense to anybody, a live streaming fee, which I'm really glad you're with us, whatever. But there's always something running in our head. We're either reading the news, trying to figure out what the COVID numbers are. We're trying to figure out what this is going on, who got this, and all that. We're going through the paper. We're listening to the newscast, and all of it is this negative mumbo-jumbo jump kind of thing that we now have to process through to figure out what is really true and what is really accurate, and we start get busy, and our brain starts firing up all the things that are important, but to what cost? Because I don't know about you, and I can't speak for, I can speak for me as a guy. The things that run through my head at any given moment is how to keep my people safe, how to make sure my, my kids and six hours away are safe, and how fast I can get there if something goes wrong, and who I can call first to make sure it's happening. Second of all, then where are all my people here? Are they all safe? Are they in a good place? Is everything happy? What about this going on? Where are we at in finances over here? Well, am I a good dad? Am I a good husband? Well, I raised my voice the other day, so I must be failing in everything. I don't read my Bible as much as I really think I need to, so I must be failing as a, God, as a child of God. I made a mistake. I sinned about this. I did this. I did this. I don't feel 100% well, so maybe there's something seriously wrong with me, and I'm running all of these thoughts through my head, and that's just 30 seconds worth of what's going on. And I looked at Sarah, and Sarah's like, I'd be more happy to share the woman's side. I'm like, I don't know if those guys could handle it. We got enough going on. Am I wrong, though? We've got all these noises, and then we add to it. For me, Jesus a couple times in Mark talks about that at one point, Jesus said in Mark, um, somewhere at the beginning of it, that he, he got away. He got up early in the morning. He went away to a solitary place just to pray. Now, that may be your morning. It may be your afternoon. It may be your midday, whatever. But there's something important about getting away from everything for a season, even if it's just for five hours in the rain, in the woods, freezing. Another place when the disciples had were returning back and forth, he said, you know what? We've got so much coming and going that you guys haven't even eaten yet. So you need to go over there. You need to rest. You need to eat. We get so busy. And so many things start rolling through our head when all God wants us to remember is at some point in our world, we have to quiet this down and all the noises around us to say, be still and know that I am God. No matter what the doctors are saying, no matter what the news is saying, no matter what people are saying, no matter what, not to be so distracted in everything else, but to remember to shut your mouth, open your ears and remember that I am God. So last night, I sit down and I'm going to go, okay, I've got to write all this stuff up and I got to think about all I'm doing. And I wrote three pages of notes about how to be distracted. And at the end of it, I got this little bitty note from God. Is that what I told you to talk about? Huh? Opened up my notes on my computer from the, what I took that day. And I realized I'd gotten completely distracted from what he shared. So I have three pages of notes on being distracted, of which was distracted from what I was supposed to share. Now I'm down to one. We get so busy with the voices. 
John chapter 10 talks about the fact that that Jesus was talking about his sheep and his sheep know his voice and all of the things because the sheep have learned. They, they, they listen. They, they pay attention. They, they're sheep. They just eat what's in front of them. They feed and they let whoever's leading them put them in the right spots. They don't try and micromanage it. They don't try and overpower it. They don't try and do any of that because then the little shepherd's hook comes up and goes, I told you no. Or the nice gently leading them back over here. We as sheep don't be that way. We run all these things in our head and we try and micromanage God from time to time about what we're supposed to do and how it's supposed to be. And we open our Bible and we hear stuff and sometimes it looks too simple and we go, oh, it can't be that simple. So we try and find something more complicated and we get online and we research and we listen to all these other voices and all these other things, which I'm not knocking that. But at some point it has to come back to here. If the voices out there, and I'm not talking about schizophrenic hearing voices in your head. But the voices we hear, the constant noise, the constant things happening, if they don't line up with the word of God, then we might need to turn the channel. Because it's something we shouldn't be listening to. Because it will distract us from the heart that God set forth before the foundation of earth for me, for you. Now, we don't do it all right. We don't do it all perfect. We, we make mistakes, and, and then the enemy uses those mistakes to, guess what, distract us to where we start, micro, we start run that in our head of all of our failures and who we might have failed and how we ought to failed and all the things that we need to do to write penance on things and fix things, and God just says, stop. With me, your repentance. Uh, we were talking about it. Friday night, the repentance is as far as the east is to the west of me remembering what you're talking about. I'm not the one reminding you of your failures. So why are you listening to it? It adds this other voice, this other thing that distracts us from moving forward because we're like, wait, I can do this. But the accusation of the enemy says, but you failed it before. And what do we do? We stop. We backtrack. And we pull back. And God says, ah, just stop. Be still. Don't be so busy to fix something, to make it, to be performance and, and, and drivenness, to all these other things. Be still. Do you know how hard it is for us to be still. For some of us, and I will pick on myself, and I'm a principal, I know how hard it is for your kids to be still. And I'm not even their teacher. I see it in assembly. But for me, it is difficult for me to be still. You want me to stand audio, I love you guys, video, I love you guys, and I'm sorry, but dad didn't even stand still. You know how hard it is to stand here in this little square and teach, all the elders and all the teachers have done it. And guess what we end up doing? We get right here with one foot on it. That's like our, it's like the farthest we'll go. We're not made to just, our bodies, there's something internally that says you're not supposed to be still. But God says, listen, there are times you're supposed to be still. Just stop. Stop. 